it's Tony from CassetteComeback.com So in today's video I'm going to spend some time with a cassette that I have featured in other videos but I've never given a dedicated video to and it's time I did because this is a very important cassette Why is it very important? It's because this cassette is not only the second most common cassette at least here in the United Kingdom but it's a cassette that's been in TDK's lineup since about 1994 for the second iteration and then from about 1989 before that and it just has been unchanged since 1994 until the end and what cassette is this? it's the TDK FE90 now why dedicate a video to this cassette? because like I say this is important but it's also a bit enigmatic as well because you see TDK is well known the entry level TDK was always the D and then you had various other things like the J's and the A's and the T1's and the B's and all this stuff but here in the UK this was the constant we didn't see many of them other ones at all but these were a very very common cassette if you went to supermarkets in the mid 90s chances are you'd see these in bins by the checkouts you know you could grab a pack and I know that I bought these and I always liked these these always performed so well I stopped buying D's and bought these these were the cassettes that I gave to people who I was doing copies for because they were reliable they worked well in my decks they sounded good and they were very cheap so what's this all about well that's the last iteration of it in fact I have a, an unwrapped one here for you to look at and if we look at the shell of it this is a standard TDK shell and what do I mean by standard well if I go a bit earlier before this to the 1990D apart from a slight difference in colour and obviously the J card uh, this is the same shell on both of these cassettes and this shell like I say on that video which I did about other strange TDKs like the J's and T1's was used there but it's using the 1990D shell and we all appreciate the 1990D for being a great tape now I'm getting ahead of myself here because this isn't the only TDK FE there was an earlier version that was around for a short amount of time was only available in five packs from what I can see and a lot of people when they see it they think it's fake it's this one and this one was sent to me by a long-term supporter Mr Marcus Stoiber thank you very much sir for sending me this because this is a very rare cassette and a lot of people think that this TDK is fake because of this logo this TDK with an exclamation mark and it's strange because this is the only cassette that I've seen outside of Japan which has this logo on it because if I show you this Japanese market cassette the CD and Walker that uses this TDK exclamation mark logo as well and quite a few Japanese cassettes did use it and in fact it was used in quite a few adverts which I've seen as well but again for Japanese market but this one came to the UK only so it seems I don't know if it's an experiment or what but it was around for a short amount of time but as far as I can see this is a genuine TDK so what we're going to do in this video well a lot of people say about this are these any good because we get a lot of questions in the groups about these because like I say they are so common and they are so cheap and people ask are they any good and the, the most the comments usually go into two categories one yeah these are really good two they're okay bit hissy use Dolby so I'm going to try and put this a bit through its paces and we're going to do some comparing and contrasting to see if we can get to the bottom of what this tape really is is it just an old D formula in an old D shell is it a completely different formula is it perhaps the worst part of an old D formula or what is it but more importantly even though I've got these the wrong way around <laughs> more importantly is to find out if these really are worth buying and if they are just a cheap throwaway cassette a dictation quality cassette or something that you can put your music on and be happy with 
So let's go a bit scientific now and do some scientific comparisons. So I've often questioned the validity of doing these frequency sweeps, but I wanted to in this case because I've always thought that the FE is basically a bit like the SF was the older version of the SA tape. The FE could just be the older formulation of the D, you know, stuff that they had left over when a new D was introduced. They used it all by loading it into FE tapes. The problem is the FE has been around so long, that might still be the case, but I don't know what version of the D they've actually based the tape on. But anyway, what I've done is I've taken the original version of the FE and compared it to the 88 version of the D because the FE original version came out just after the 88 version of the D and likewise the version 2 of the FE I've compared to the 91 version of the D because it came out after the 91 version of the D but it was around for so long the version of the FE I've got could be a later one with a different formulation this is the thing but the point of this graph was to show that on the whole up to around 2 kilohertz which is where most of our hearing is, they're very, very similar tapes. It's only at 2 kilohertz that we start to have some divergence, and the biggest part of that comes here, where we have around about 9 kilohertz. We've got the right channel of the 91D, which is about 1.7 decibels higher than the right channel of the version 2 FE. So I don't know if that means anything to you, but looking at it now, uh, I'd be tempted to say that none of these four cassettes share the same tape. So again, looking at the actual way cassette biases, how much bias it needs, how much levels it needs, is no signifier of what tape is in there. But, just for our own curiosity, let's take the original ferric, bias this up and let's have a see. Okay, so you have the muffies there. Levels, let's just tweak that a little bit. And have a look at the bias, tweak that a little bit. And it's there, nice and stable, it's there. So let's compare this now to the 88 formulation of the D. Even though it was different through frequency sweep, like I say, let's just see real world what the difference is. Oops. Okay, the azimuth is the same. Now you see this needs less level. The 88D needs less level and a lot less Bias, grief, that's a lot different, isn't it? So, let's bias this one up. That's the 88D, that's a very good performer, that nice and steady. Great version of the D, the 88. So, these two do not have the same tape. This, I don't think, is a, an older formulation like this one. I mean, if you look at them, if you can see, they're, they're not massively different in colour, to be honest, but, yeah, they're not the same tape. So let's see now how the version 2 of the FE compares to the 88, bearing in mind that this could be one that was made in the year 2000, for all I know, because these were going for quite a while. But let's have a see how it compares anyway. Right, the azimuth is out. Quite a bit. Okay, right, the azimuth is there. Levels, levels are very similar. But the bias is down on the 88, if you know what I mean. The biasing is different. So again, I don't think we can say that this has the same tape in as the 88. But let's compare the, whoops, the 88 to the 91 and see if this 91 actually is the same as the 88. Okay, so just the azimuth, right. Oop. Okay, the level's just a tiny bit off and the biasing is almost the same. 
so I mean if we just tweak just that left channel just a little bit and then go there it's, it's pretty much the same so these two have different shells but very similar tape and it could be the same formulation they look very similar like I say age plays a difference but these look very similar and even though this has the same shell this doesn't calibrate like this does so this is a different tape like I say this could be a later version who knows but the point of this video is I guess not to try and find out if this is just a cheap D but really I want you to appreciate this for what it is it might not be the same tape as a D it might be completely its own formulation but this is a common tape that is cheap and plentiful to buy and you need to appreciate this because this is possibly the best value tape you can buy new old stock easily going and we're just going to play some music with it now and see how good this can sound on a well biased deck that has some good music going through it and that is ultimately what it's all about forget the graphs trust your ears listen to how good this tape can sound now this bit of the video is done after I've done everything but I just noticed something on watching it back some of you probably noticed this and have been frothing at the mouth and po posting in the comments about it before watching the rest of the video because you haven't got to this bit but what is it this ferric is broken look at that it's broken now why didn't I just go and redo everything again with one that isn't broken I'm making a point how tough is this cassette because you're going to listen to it recording some proper music now and it sounds fantastic and it still does that whilst being broken what a cassette so let's see how this little tape can really sound I biased it all up and we're going to listen to some proper music now from one of my favourite bands and a great supporter of mine, Candy Apple Blue. And this is their track, Game Over.
And there we go. Is it the best recording cassette ever? No. Is it a bit hissy? Yeah. But did it sound good? Yes, it did. This is no Type Zero. This is no inferior dictation level cassette. This cassette can sound great. And the point is that right now in rising tape prices, this is the best entry level tape for your money. You can get these readily. I mean, heck, I sell these for £1.99. And as we all know, I am not the cheapest seller out there. But you can get these regularly for a low price they look well, I found them to be very tough and reliable, and they sound good. So I said at the start that this is an important cassette. And I know a lot of you right now are saying, hang on, why didn't you record anything on this? Well, two reasons. One, I don't want this to be an extra long video, it's already long enough. But more importantly, this isn't an important cassette. This right now is a rare collectible. This doesn't sound as good as what prices these go for. It's as simple as that. These only come in five packs. When they do turn up, they go for high money. This isn't an important cassette. It's just there because it's part of the FE family. Like this one's a part of the FE family. I'm sure a few of you have pointed this out in the comments before watching to this, but this is the first version of version two, if you will. I know that sounds strange. This one has got a welded shell and it's a different shell. Yeah, it's got a nice bit of blue there and red hubs, which look nice. But the thing is, again, this now is quite rare and collectible. The J card is different because it's got the red on it. It's like almost, I don't know, this is a cost saving version of it which has got a better shell. So these again are not important because these are rare and collectible. This is the important cassette because like I say, it's readily available, it sounds good, and it is to me the benchmark that new cassettes need to beat. I mean, just like the Max L U R, they've got to be better than these to be worth the money. These are hardy, these are plentiful, these are cheap, these sound well. Any new cassette formulation out there has to be better than this. Or why wouldn't you buy this? Because you can get these for less than a pound each, brand new if you look hard enough or you buy enough of them. And that is currently about a quarter of what a new 60 costs. So what I'm saying is don't dismiss these cassettes. If you're new to taping and you want to just get some cheap cassettes to try out, this is the one. If you've got a great deck like I have, luckily enough, these make great recordings on it. And again, prove that the most smart money in the hobby of cassettes is investing in a great deck as opposed to buying expensive cassettes because a great deck can make a good cassette sound great, a poor deck can't make a great cassette sound good. It's as simple as that. So I hope that was useful more for you new guys and gals out there. But other than that, please like and subscribe. Until next time, happy taping. Bye bye.